there is a small difference between saying assigning a value and assigning a reference. But this is not the same thing as that of a, with a C programming language or other programming language. In the other programming language, whenever we look at this particular operator, it is assumed to be the address of operator. But here, that idea is not there. What we want to do is, we want to make both the pointers to point to the same value. So let's look at um, the pointers in our C programming language. In the C programming language, you might have created a variable and you might have assigned a value. And then you might have created a pointer and then you might have assigned the address of this. That Anderson thing will not come. You might have assigned the address of it using that Anderson symbol. Now, what's the difference between uh, what does uh, this mean to you? Now, when we say that uh, x and when we assign the value, it means that uh, there is a location somewhere, and this location has a address, and inside this, we are storing the value 10, and the variable x is now pointing towards this value. So this is the meaning of it. So it is uh, having that particular value. Now the x also has a address and the address could be So there could be, so x has a address and it is pointing to a value which is there at a particular location. Now when you go for this statement, what is, what is the meaning of it? It means to say that there is a PTR, there is a address that is associated with the PTR and now when you say that uh, the PTR is ampersand of x, you mean to say that uh, the PTR contains a value. So there is uh, a value which is there and the PTR will contain a value. And this particular value that you are thinking of is the address where the x is pointed. And that is going to be here, so it is pointing to this. So, in other words, you are saying that uh, it is trying to point to the same location where x is pointing. That's the meaning of saying the pointers. And you have a lot of uh, idea about it. And if you want to get the value, you use the indirection operator to get the value from the pointer and so on and so forth. So, that's the uh, pointers in C. Let's look at what is the meaning of saying this statement. Now, it means a very different thing. Now, let's assume that we have a variable here, and let me call it as var, and I'm placing a value 10 into this variable. So, it means to say that now the variable var. knows the location where the value 10 is stored. Now, what is the meaning of saying dollar, say, var1 or var2, whatever it is, equal to the ampersand, ampersand. so ampersand of var. So what does this mean? It means to say that we have a var here, that is var2, and it is also pointing to the same location. There is no address, there is no confusion. It just means to say that you have an alias name for the same location. So there are two uh, variables 
that are pointing to the same location. That means if the value within this location changes, it will be highlighted by both of them. Very different from the pointers that uh, you have seen. Var2 does not uh, uh, have the address of var1. That is the essential difference. We don't store the address. When you say this in C, and if you say PTR is equal to ampersand of a variable x, what is stored in PTR is the address of that location. Here it is not the one. It's actually pointing to the location. And uh, in your C program and uh, the other programming language, uh, you may have a operator that will give you the address of the location. If you want to get the address of the location in PHP, it is not possible. We don't venture into the actual location where the values are stored. Is it a problem? The answer is no. We don't have to bother because let the PHP <coughs> handle that particular thing. There are very powerful language like Java, which also hides the way in which uh, it handles the variables. In Java, you can't ask the Java, tell me the location, tell me a pointer. Java says, I don't have all those things. You want to declare a variable, I will take care of it. Okay? The same thing is true here. You declare a variable, PHP will take care of it. Where is it storing? How long it's going to store? When it is going to garbage collect? It's not our problem. PHP will take care of it. Okay? So whenever you try to use uh, ampersand, understand that it's not a pointer. You are just trying to create a uh, double reference to a, or maybe more than one reference to a given value. Now, if you have the analogy of uh, uh, the Unix file system, it's like creating a hard link in um, Unix. Now, I don't know whether you are familiar with the Unix. We have this inode and we have the data section and this inode actually points to the data location. Whenever you create a directory entry, this inode will be there in the directory entry. So when you create uh, a, when you type this ls and minus l, it actually shows you the file name and it's going to tell you the inode number. Some number it's going to show which is the inode that has the reference for the actual data. Now, when you create a hard link, uh, when you do that ln and other things, what you are doing is you are actually replicating this inode to the other file name. So, it, it means to say that both, the, both of them, both your file name are pointing to the same inode. In turn, it points to the same location. So it means to say that. In other words, in a very simple way, it just means to say that you are just creating a uh, reference or a variable. Let's try to uh, look into that in action. So let me go here to the yesterday's um, same file. And I will delete all those things from here. When we try to create a variable, and let me assign a value here. Now, if I start var2 equal to ampersand of var, And if I try to echo the var1 and var2, I'm going to get, you can expect the answer. So you can, even though it is taking the time, you can expect the answer. It's going to be the same. 
Now, which is the uh, scenario wherein we try to use that thing? The only place where we try to use it is when we want to go for uh, pass the parameter, a function as a reference. You know very well there are two ways in which you can pass the parameter to a function pass by value and pass by the reference. When you want to go for pass by reference, we do that particular thing. Again, don't get confused with the pointers and all the other things. There are two tens are here, one ten followed by the other ten. Now, if I try to change the value of one of them, what is going to happen? So, I'm going to go over here, var, and I'm going to make it as 20, and then I'm going to repeat it again. Now, when I try to repeat it, I'm going to do one uh, small change here, and that is I'm going to uh, put this thing in here, and then I'm going to concatenate it with the BR so that it's going to come in one line. Now, if I save it and just uh, try to refresh it, you know this happened. Both the places it is changed. Now, what's the difference uh, here? Both of them were pointing to the same location. Both this, uh, after this line, after this line, both the var1 and the var is pointing to the same location that has a pen. And I said print the value of var and print the value of var2. Initially, it was printing. 10, 10, and then I went to one of the variable and then said go to the location, change the value. And then I went back and said, okay, now print the value using the original variable and the alias that was given to it. And both of them has to give you the same answer. Okay. More about um, uh, this kind of trick in the uh, function. When I discuss about the function, I'll get back to that. Now, for now, it's just uh, to say that both of them will point to the same location. And you can use either this or the other one to a point to uh, make the changes. Can I have more than uh, one, ref more than two references for a variable? Can I have ten alias for a given location? Answer is yes. You can go on and you can try it. Okay, let's look at uh, some special operator. The one that operator that you see first is the for the arrays. This one is uh, uh, locates to, and uh, again in the array. Comma separation, if you want to have a argument list separation. This is, uh, I hope uh, you are all familiar with this. And this is a shortcut for um, uh, if condition. It's called as a ternary operator. Uh, it's still there. Instance of, we'll talk about it in the uh, object oriented programming. And then f function is uh, used to suppress the error. Let's look at uh, this one, which is uh, not same. It's not going to be a very uh, difficult challenge. Uh, so instead of writing this if statement, we can use the shortcut notation. So how do I uh, use the shortcut notation? Let's say var is equal to 10. And you can say uh, if var is equal to 10, question mark, and then do anything. So what you can think of doing? Can I think of doing echo? It is ten colon or anything. You can go on doing it. I'll go for an assignment. I don't want to bring that. I can just say x is equal to 10. That will create a problem because it's going to give. Something. I will not go for an echo because echo will push off something to the end. Other location. Now, what is the meaning of it? If, if x is equal to 10, you take one action. If it is not, you take the other action. So, this is if up to here, up to this part. If this condition is true, so if it is true, 
execute this section. If this condition, whatever condition that you are specifying, if it is false, after the uh, colon, whatever you have written, execute the second condition. That's simple as that. So if uh, else that you are using it. So this is there in the other programming language if you are not aware of it. Almost all programming language has this option. Okay, then let's look at um, the other one. That is um, the one that uh, we are not seeing. This is the suppress an error. Now, uh, you can suppress an error. If you don't want to see an error, you can just say in an expression, uh, if there is an uh, error, you can just say, don't show me the error. Now, let me go over here and let me uh, make an expression here. X is equal to uh, $y plus VAR. Then, now you know very well this is going to create a problem. The reason is y is not declined. So, if I try to see the output of this, I get a error message saying that see this uh, variable y is not declared, and you are trying to add y uh, which is not declined. Now, how do I suppress it is, um, I just put the at in front of it, of the expression, and then uh, tell the compiler or the parser uh, not to show up that thing. Nothing is going to show up because you know very well, there is no error. Now, error is not being shown, but there is nothing that is getting echoed out. So, you will not find <coughs> any output either. Okay, if you say that, uh, okay, I want to see what is the value now. Uh, value will be definitely, that value is not considered. So, x will get the value that So, if I go over here, then this way, refresh it. I did something. Any of that expression will not work out. Uh, you just said, uh, don't show me an error. But there is other way in which uh, you can handle the error, and that is uh, to just say error control. I'll talk about it. Uh, and this is not a great idea to suppress an error. Uh, the reason is that will not work because uh, y is not there, and I'm trying to show something, and uh, it's trying to show me that uh, you'll end up in trouble if I look at uh, here. And uh, it just says that uh, you misuse them altogether. And uh, if you want, you can put it uh, on the other side also. Uh, now, this is not a advisable thing that the operator is there, but it is not advisable. Whenever you feel that uh, uh, there is going to be an error, try to catch that error and then try to handle it. Uh, do not just suppress the error because it's going to create unexpected uh, result at the end. There is also something called as error control. I'll come back to that uh, slightly later with this one as the other one. Uh, wherein you can just ask the PHP not to show me any type of error. I don't want to see any errors. Uh, right at the top of the page, you can just say that I don't want to see any errors. If there is an error or not, you just do what was asked for. Don't try to uh, give me advices. So in that case, it will not give you any warning. It will not give you an error message. It will not uh, give you anything. But your program will definitely will end up in a big trouble. Uh, you can do it. There is um, nothing that prevents you uh, from doing it. Let me uh, go ahead with it. So that will uh, complete the operators. I will not waste too much of time because as and when if they are really put into use, I'll just tell you how the things are going other than just wasting your time on actually the one that you have already seen is typecasting. If you want to typecast it, take the variable, uh, put the Type like in float, uh, in double uh, string, and so on and so forth, and specify the old variable. You are type casting it, and uh, uh, if you want to know what is the type of the variable, you the get type, it will return the value. If it is, if it knows that uh, what is uh, there within the variable, if it cannot decide it, it's going to say that I really don't know what is the type of it, and it says I, the type is unknown. And I think I've already talked about it in the last class. Get type will return the type of the given variable. 
and if you want to check whether it is a double or whether it is an int, you can say is underscore followed by the tag, like is double, is int, is a, a string, and this kind of thing. You can cross query by that. That's the error control. I think I've already talked about it. There is the other uh, operator that you can think of using, and that is the shell edge. Uh, shell execution is not uh, something that uh, you will ever do, but uh, in some strange scenario, like when you try to handle a file or this kind of thing, uh, you may try to use it. What's the meaning of saying shell X is you are asking the underlying operating system to execute one of the shell commands. For example, you are asking if it was a Unix system, you are asking the Unix system, uh, show me uh, or execute ls minus dash a. That is, um, I want to say everything the lengthy format. In Windows, uh, the way in which you do it is CMD. And uh, you have in Windows equivalent. This is this is going to work even in the that command is uh, alias command is there, even in uh, the Linux, and that is the DIR. So if I want to get the display DIR, and if I want to show that thing, I can do it. Uh, again, this is not something that uh, you will ever do it, just for uh, uh, the sake of explanation, I'm doing it. Let's go ahead and let's try to get that thing. So I'm going to say shell x, and so I'm going to just uh, store it in the variable, so let's say var, and I'm going to say shell x. And I'm going to just type dir here. Get me that the dir command and just show that thing. I'm going to echo that thing. Follow. Okay. I'm going to just put it inside a pre so that um, I can see the output um, in much neat way and maybe slash 3 so let's run it and let's see what is it going to do so this is going to uh, produce an output and the output that it is going to produce is slightly a uh, bit complicated now let me go to this location and that is cd XM there is two and there. Okay, I'm going to just clear this one. So I'm in the exam now, and I'm going to clear this again. Okay. I'm going to say DIR here, and you notice that um, it's going to show you this output. Uh, this is the one that it is trying to show. Let me show that thing on the screen here. It's not going to appear in the way that you expect to see. But something of this type you are going to see. So it is going to say, uh, it is running inside that. Zoom it out a bit. Clear. And CLS. I am a bit confused with the slash AD. CD, and that was. Inside. Now, if you are wondering what I am trying to do is, I am trying to go to this location. It is saying that it is there in that location. I am going to bear it here and it is trying to show this one. Let me clear it. And let me type the DIR here. Now this is the DIR. 
within the location exam exe doc student registration and that is what it is trying to say the directory is this is the directory and it is trying to show you add new student if you try to uh, look at uh, here it says add new student dot php and this is the one it's trying to say the same thing but you will notice that it is not trying to show this dir or dir the reason is the browser thinks that dir is a tab you know very well how to start a tab and that the dir appears the browser thinks that it is a tag so it just uh, says i don't know what is that tag all about so i just don't show that thing that is what i told you if the browser can't understand a particular tag it will just ignore it so this dir it is trying to ignore it but then it is trying to show this dot and the double dot that it is trying to show but because of that the dir everything uh, appears like a mess now if you look at the source code of this and if you verify that source with the output that um, is being shown onto the other you will notice that it's the same thing that um, you are getting it the directory is this the directory is this dir and dir dir dot dot and dir dot dot so this is the one uh, that is being shown now let's come back to it what does this command do it is running a dir on uh, our ls in your unix system on the um, directory of your um, file system uh, can i delete a file the answer is yes if you are not very careful you can end up in deleting all the files uh, which are there within the directory can i execute this kind of um, uh, command here if uh, you try to execute delete start dot start this is going to delete all the files which are there in the current directory so you must be extremely careful what you expect from the user so when a user is giving a input from the text box so you show a text box to the user you ask okay enter your name enter your register number enter something uh, you must be extremely careful to not to directly start executing what the user has given because user can type this as their name and uh, if you are not very careful instead of this the user can type uh, this del star dot star as the name of the user and if you are not very careful you will end up in deleting almost everything from the entire website so be careful with the command that's a dangerous command but it is still there so if it is, if you are not very careful uh you may end up uh, in a big trouble so let's go ahead and read and that's operator precedence and associativity you know very well uh, when you have the operator there is a precedence the bodmas rule which is the golden rule that was there it's still applicable and when there is the same type of operator there is um, the association for example all of them are same level but within that you have the less than is first executed then less than or equal to then greater than greater than or equal to not equal to that is associativity within the level let's go ahead with the next one and that is the uh, condition statement we have if else uh, and uh, else if statement and the switch statement these are state forward one i will not waste too much of time if you have a condition if the condition is to execute otherwise don't execute a uh, simple as one if the date is the uh, i'm taking the date i have not explained about that function date function i'll come back to those functions later when we handle the user defined as well as the built-in function if the date is like friday you take it as um, something otherwise you take it as something else okay uh, this is a uh, here then if with one uh, one statement if with more than one statement you need a flow bracket and if and else statement also you can have if else if. so all are valid uh, this is the same thing next one is a switch statement now if you want to have a switch statement switch write an expression case followed by a label case followed by a label and uh, between one label and the other label there must be a break and there is a default the same thing there is nothing new about it so for example switch on the value of i if the value of i is zero do something break it if it is not uh, do something break it a case uh, 
you can have a number of cases and uh, the, the default is optional like other programming languages. We have while, do while, for and for each. While has the same meaning, do while has the same meaning, there is nothing different inside uh, both of them. You have a condition and uh, you have a set of statement that need to be executed. Except one thing, there is a special syntax that you can think of using and the special syntax is this. So after while, if you put a colon here, then you don't have to put this flower bracket. If you don't want to put a flower bracket starting from uh, here to the here, you can just put a colon and then write the end line. So let me uh, quickly show that thing. I will not execute that program. So let me say you have a while loop here. So let me say by dollar i dollar i less than 10 is in that they put a colon and you have the number. So this is same as writing the cloud line. So you just put a colon and end one. Okay, let's say uh, this is something which is uh, not there in the your other programming language. Rest of the things remain same. There is uh, nothing new about the, the while loop. While loop behaves in the same way. It can check the condition and iterates through it. And in the same way, you have do while loop. Uh, do while will first execute, check the condition here. If the condition is true, it will start repeating it. Otherwise, it will exit out of the loop. Uh, identical, you have a for loop with the expression, condition, and the expression too. The same thing, you initialize it here, you put the condition here, you put the increment on the other side. Uh, you can leave the uh, condition or you can leave the initialization or you can leave the uh, increment, but the comma separation must be there like the other programming language. You can initialize it, uh, not here, somewhere else. If it is already initialized, it, you can just leave this thing blank. Check only for the exit condition and start incrementing it. And if you don't want to increment it, just go for the uh, condition and uh, everything must be separated by a semicolon. A simple example over here. So you have um, i equal to something and uh, you do this one. Uh, again, the same syntax is valid. If you put the colon here and uh, end for, it's the same as not putting the law bracket. Uh, that is valid. In this case, also. some examples, and I think I don't want to waste my time on uh, telling you all the things. If you notice here, there is a initialization, there is an increment, but there is no uh, exit condition. And the exit condition somewhere within the uh, loop you are exiting it. If you look at this particular case, there is no initialization, there is no uh, exit condition, there is no uh, increment. That means to say that uh, you are not validating anything. Somewhere within the loop there is a exit that is going to work out. If it is not, uh, the program will end. Now this one is a uh, last one that says you are not doing anything. You simply run the loop for uh, 10 iterations without doing anything because immediately after this you have a semicolon, not a colon. There is the other one which is uh, Used in the Java, and again, I'm not very sure whether you tried that thing, and that is uh, as for each loop, which is there in almost all new programming language. And for each is for each element within the collection. In Java, it is just means to say that for each element within a collection, do something. Like if you have a collection of objects, like list of objects, and if you want to iterate through the list of objects, like if you have a uh, if you have built a stack, if you have built a queue, or if you have built a hash tree, and if you want to iterate through all of them in Java, you use the for each. Here, we don't have that kind of complexities. We have an array, and if you want to iterate through all the elements of the arrays, we use for each. Uh, and there are two variations which are there for uh, each array expression and a value, which will just retry the value. Uh, if you want to get the key, you can have key and uh, you can say points to value. So let's look at um, this in action. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to build a array. There are many ways in which you can build an array. One of the simplest ways in which you can build an array is you just start ARR and then uh, you use the square bracket 
Uh, within this, you supply the value. This will create a, a the other way of creating an array is um, you create use the function array then specify some value. What will it do? Now, if I want to iterate through all of them, how do I go about it? So let's go for this for each. You have the two options for each uh, array as value or for each array as key pair value. So let me go for the first one. For array, I'm going to take the first array. For array, ARR, let me just uh, get rid of this so that you won't get confused. I'm going to go with the first one. Let me say that there is an array and I want to print the value. So I'm going to say echo and then within this, I'm going to say BR. And then I'm going to say value. So what will this statement do? For every iteration, it will pick up one one element from the array. So when it is going for the first time, when this iterates for the first time, it picks the first value. Second time, it's going to pick the second value, third value, fourth value, and fifth value, and so on. Every time it picks up one value, that value is stored inside this variable. It could be x, it could be z, it could be anything. So uh, any name you can give, it's not that uh, it has to be a value itself, it could be anything. So let me uh, reduce it a bit to just to tell you that that variable can be changed. So every iteration, it picks up one value from the array, stores it in the value, which can be used within the loop. Now if I execute this statement, you can expect uh, the output to be the expected one. So let me close this one. And then refresh it. And this is what you are going to get. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because um, these are the elements which are there within the array. There is the other one. You can say as key goes to value. Uh, what's the meaning of saying key? Uh, uh, key points to value. It just means that you want to uh, show the key and value pair and I think in the last class I told you array is nothing but a key value pair. Now when you declare this, what is uh, happening within the uh, memory location? If you really want to know what is happening is you have a location here, you have one item uh, two item. Now this is the inner one is one. This is the value that I'm trying to show here. This is the volume, but this is this location is array of zero. So this is the zero index, and uh, this one the value is two, and here the index is one and so on and so forth. So you have the index, you have the value. This index is the key that I'm talking about and the value is the value. So I'm saying that show me the index and show me the value. So get me the index as well as the value. So let me try that thing uh, here. I want to show the index and index could be i, it could be anything. Again, that's just a variable name that uh, I'm trying to uh, use there. So key, and I'm just going to say key is pointing to the value. It could be i, it could be j, it could be anything. This is just a variable. So this one is the index, and the value is the actual value. Now, if I try to save this and go back to my page and refresh it, this is what I'm going to get. And here, you will notice that uh, the, it's trying to show me the index and the value. So index for this is 0. That's the key that it is trying to show and the value that it is trying to show. So the key is 0, value is 1. For the next one, key is that the index is 1, the value is 2 and so on and so forth. So you get the key value pair. Again, when you try to create a array, you can create the array in this format. Instead of using the numerical key, 
you can then say that uh, x points to 1. So what's the meaning of this is you are just saying that the p now is not 0, 1, 2, 3. I don't want you to uh, give me the indexes. I have my own key. So what is, what does this mean? You still have a array, let me go back. You still have a array here. There is this first element which is still there and the value inside this is 1. It is still valid. Only difference now is this index is x now. So you are not saying zero, you are saying that I am giving you a index, that is what is called as an associative array. You are associating a key with a value. So now if I try to run this one, let me run this particular um, script and let's see what's the output that um, you can expect. And you notice that uh, the key that uh, I have supplied is 1. So I said that the first one has the key x. So it took, next one I didn't give any key. So it went back to x default. And it started uh, putting the indexes from 0. So it goes on. What if, if I went here and if I say that no, this cannot be a numerical value. And I want you to use a key y for the value 4. In that case, what is going to happen? Let me run this one and let me show you the output first. And let's see what it is trying to do over here. Now, if you notice over here, uh, it said the first one is uh, x is the key, value is 1. Second one, the value is not specified. For the second one, the value is not specified. So I take the index as 0 to Third, this is the third element, index is 1. For the fourth, I said I have a key, but for the fifth element, it was not there. You notice that it is uh, its value starting from 0, 1, and this was, I gave the value, so it skipped that thing, but this is not 3. You notice that it is taking 0, 1, and it is continuing its indexes. So if you don't provide the last index where it has stopped, it will start putting its indexes from that point. Okay. Uh, again, uh, you can have the indexes for all the elements, it's up to you, uh, how you want to do it. So, but uh, I want to just uh, tell you that this is the actual for each. So, let's look at what is it for an array, the key, whatever key that you have specified, and the value. Next one is, am I supposed to use only x or a single letter as my key? Or can I use init as my uh, key? So that's the next one. Can I use the entire word as my key? Or is it just a single letter I'm supposed to use it? So let me refresh it. And you will notice here that it said, OK, that's your key. And I have no problem with your key. So you specify the key, and um, it's the end of it. Uh, next one is, can I use this one? You know very well, let's go back here. You know here that uh, it was trying to show me that this was 0. So can I uh, put my own integer indexes and confuse it and say that 1 goes to uh, 2. So remember this is the value here. This is one value. And the next one I'm saying that 1 goes to 2 now. So my key is 1 and you start uh, 1, key 1 goes to 2. In this case, what's going to happen? It's going to Go here and then let me reply on this. And you notice that uh, it said, okay, you wanted to go with the one. I have no problem. So I'll start with the one, two, three, four. That just means to say that uh, the keys are not like the same thing that you have in the other programming language. If you don't specify the key, it will start like an array. If you specify the key, uh, it is up to you. It is, uh, this is just a collection of key value pair. It just aggregate the key value pair, it is treated like an array. You can manipulate it in any way you want to. There's more about it in the arrays when I really uh, jump back to that uh, array section. So let's go back and these are the two ones. 
uh, very quick uh, review. So we have an array, 1 to 17, and I say array A, and as a value V, if you say as V, it's going to just give you the key value, um, the only the value. If you say uh, you have an array, 1 points to 1, 2 points to 2, 3, and so on and so forth, and you say I want both the key and the value. And then you start doing anything within the uh, for loop, it's up to you. Okay. Uh, then the as usual, we have two things. One is the break and the other one is the continue. I will not show you any demo on that. Uh, these things uh, remain same. Suppose if you have a while loop uh, with some condition or a for loop, it could be any other loop for that matter. Uh, if you say in between somewhere, if you say that break, it just means to say that um, break out of the loop. Come out of the loop. Do not bother about the loop. Just go out of the loop. Leave everything uh, in any state. There is one other line that uh, you also have it, and that is uh, continue. What's the meaning of saying continue is uh, you have reached up to this point. You have executed all the lines up to here. From now, just go back to the condition, cross verify the condition, and if you require it, come back again. Do not go after this line. So, continue means from here, go back and start the loop again, but continue does not mean to say that go out of the loop. It just the other way of saying uh, to the uh, compiler or the parser that go back to the condition, cross verify the condition again. And then if you want to enter into the loop or then exit out of this. What's the meaning of saying break is you're just telling the from time that leave the condition, leave all the statement, just go out of the loop. And whatever statement that comes out of outside this loop just starts executing that uh, statement. Uh, forget about this loop altogether. That's the meaning of it. I'm not going to waste my time on that. Uh, so here you have only one condition. Uh, here I'm just saying that uh, if you get a stop here. You notice that one, two, three, four stop. Remember a very important thing. This is not a key. This is actually a value that is stored. In other words, it's an array of strings. Okay. It's not an array of key value pair or something. So the index of this will be zero and it is pointing to one. Index of this is one, pointing to two and so on. Now here I'm saying that uh, uh, this statement, I will just come back to you, uh, this statement uh, after some time. Uh, this just means to say that if you find a value as stop, break the loop and go ahead with it. You know, because I just pointed these two. Let's look at what is the meaning of saying this statement list and this statement age. Uh, this word is very obvious one. So if you look, look at this each, each is followed by a array. It just means to say that each array, it means to say that each element within the array. So that's meaning of it. In other words, you are just asking that each take give me one element at a time from the array. So what does this each um, returns? Yeah. I'm going to explain that thing uh, in the array, but yeah, let's try to see what does that each returns. Now let me go over here and uh, let me create a variable x and I'm going to say each and array come out then I'm not going to print as it is I'm going to echo this one inside a tree so that um, I can see what it is trying to do I will use it reformat it so that the browser will be able to show me what is it trying to show uh, this will not work you will get a nasty error when I try to just ask it um, I get me that so, uh, the meaning of it is give me each element so I'm asking uh, this each go to the array get me the element now what is it trying to return now if you think that it's going to return uh, emit or it's going to return one it is wrong let me first show you what it is trying to return and then I'll come back to the explanation now when I try to uh, refresh this it just says that uh, there is some notice and uh, it just says that uh, uh, it was a string and now the answer that this is like an error uh, it just says that uh, what it was uh, what was this was an error so if you look at the source code of it you will notice that within the tree 
uh, within this pre and pre, you have only the line array. This was an error that it generated it. So uh, let me come back. So x was an error. It was not uh, a value. So it was not returning. In other words, each is not returning one value from the array. Instead, each actually returns an array. So it's like a subarray that is trying to do. Uh, we know very well if it is an array, uh, the easiest way to print this array is print r. I'm going to <coughs> break this tree here and I'm going to get back to that function. So the one that um, we are using is this print r. And I'm now saying print r go and uh, because it said x was an array, I'm asking print r, okay, tell me what is there inside them. So it was an array, and you know very well, print R will print an array in a very neat way. I've shown that thing in the last class. And this is what it is um, trying to show, but the print in fact, uh, it should have shown me like this. Okay, in any case, uh, it is trying to, so I expected it to show me in a neat way, like the one, uh, the good one, yeah. Uh, let me not waste time on that. Now let's look at what uh, it, uh, what does this mean? So you have one and one to one value one init zero init and t this one. So I'll start with this zero and then one index one and zero. So let me uh, try to figure out what it is trying to show. So let me go over here and let me create a table. So uh, there are two things over here within this table. Let me start with the index zero. I'm going to type this index first. So I'll start with this uh, index. So index is uh, zero, and the value that it is trying to show is image. Okay. Then the next one, I'm going to go with the second one. Index is one, and uh, the value it is trying to show is one. Next one is this index. I'll, I'll take any one of them. You take um, the key and the value. So the next one it says key. Let me take it uh, this way. So this is key. And the value for this is n. And the next index that I'm talking about, see so this was an index here. This is how this is an index. This is also an index, but the index has a name that is key. This index has a name value, and um, the value that is stored in this is one. So let's recall what was there in our array. I can't uh, show you this array, but uh, I hope uh, uh, you are able to recall that um, that array uh, had uh, init and uh, the array to just recall that array had. I started like this, aim it, and it was pointing to 1. And there was many other things which were there. So the key was aim it, the key was the aim it, the value is 1. Next it says index 0, it is aim it, and index 1, it is value. That means it's returning 4 values altogether. The same thing it is repeating it. So in the it gives it in the form of zero and one, one pair, and it gives it in the form of a key value one pair. So it returns the same value, it returns a key value in two pairs, one in the zero and one index, in the index base, and the other one is the uh, the key value pair. So the each actually returns four values altogether. Now out of that you can take any one of them. Now, out of these four values that are written, I can ask the uh, my list to take two of its value and then use it. Now, let me go to the list here and let me use this list. And I'm going to say to the list, there are four variables are there, or let's say two variables are there, and fill these two variables. From the array. So there is an array, and I'm saying get the two values and fill those two values or assign these two values to A and B. Let me go to this echo, <laughs> go to this echo, and let me print A, B. 
I'm going to ignore all these um, three and other things. They are not really required. So I have an array here with four values: one, uh, two, three, and four. And I am asking this list get the two values out of that array, and then I'm, I'm asking it to okay, show me those two values. So let me go over here and let me refresh this. Uh, you will notice that there are actually two values are there. One, the reason is uh, it's not able to get that if I start doing it in this way. Uh, the reason why it is not able to get it is I'm confusing it uh, with um, my own case. So it just says um, I can get the uh, key value pairs because somewhere it starts with one, two, three, four. After that, it just uh, goes up and, uh, and so on and so forth. So I just go over here and then save it and come back and refresh. I get two values here. So I removed all of them and made it a very simple one. So here, if you want, I can get rid of it. That was a error that it was trying to show me. I said I want two values as usual from the last uh, uh, thing. I'm just going to here. Uh, it's not going to make any change. Now what is that I'm trying to do? Is I'm asking the list go to the array, take two values and assign it to A and B. So this list, it's not a function actually. Uh, it's an operator that helps you to assign multiple values in one shot. So what I'm trying to do is I'm assigning A and B. In one shot I get the value of A and B. I can go to A, B, C, D, uh, to E. In one shot I'm asking the list go get all the values of assign it to uh, these variables. I'm not going to write this thing. In other words, I'm saying that I don't want to write this kind of uh, uh, statement. So AR of 0, again, $B is equal to, again, uh, AR of um, 1. So this is equivalent. This line is equivalent to writing two lines. If you have 10 items, imagine if you have an array of 100 elements, and if you, uh, quickly if you want to get them, you just uh, go to the list and ask the list, go to the array, get all the values, assign it to these individual variables, and I'm going to use it. Now, let me come back to the uh, program that I have just shown you here, even though that was <coughs> not. It's just so let's look at this while loop. Now, what I'm asking in this while loop is I'm asking this each. So each will return four values. We know very well. So it's going to return one index of a key value pair, and I'm asking the list. It returns four values, out of which just take two values, key and value. Then I'm using it. So in other words, I'm asking the each go to the array, take one value, and then assign it to these two variables which are here. So take one value from the array, assign it to key and value. What's the meaning of taking one value? Take the key and value pair from the array. So take the key and take the value, assign it to this. So what does uh, this particular statement will do is it will go here when you call it for the first time it will go here it will pick this one and it will assign that one here and the index of it is zero so this is at the zero index this is the one index it assigns that zero index here then what happens then it will point to the second element so you know very well inside an array, it maintains a pointer. Once it reads one element, next time if you call each, it will point to the next element. So it picks up one element and moves the pointer, internal pointer of the array, to point it to the next one. So once it reaches up to here, if you call again each, it will end up in trouble because each cannot fetch any more elements. So what each will do is, wherever the pointer is pointing, initially it will be pointing to the first element of the array. It picks up one element, move the pointer to the next element. If you call again, it will pick up one more element, move the pointer to the next until you reach the end. When you reach to the end, the each will return a false value saying that I cannot go any further, it's an end of an array, and that while loop will break altogether. So this is a very simple uh, example wherein I am trying to break the loop based on a condition. So the other one is exit and I think you are already familiar. Both of them is to use the exit out of the
program with the uh, RMSH.